What's up guys? Today we're gonna talk about protein sources, all right? Um, I'm gonna do a very thorough breakdown and I actually did make a little template so I don't get too much off on tangent. We're gonna talk about specifics of these proteins. We're gonna talk about chicken, sirloin, cod, salmon, egg whites, whole eggs, and red meat, all right? That's all we're gonna talk about. Um, so like if people start popping questions like, what about pork? What about tilapia? What about shrimp? We're not gonna go there today. We're just gonna talk about these basic things, okay? Now, <clears throat> what we're gonna cover is what these foods are best used for, um, what they're high in, uh, the potential problems with them, and what you can do to combat that, okay? So one thing I am gonna touch on is something that many people don't understand in the or terminology of is what is called an insulin index. People are very uh, familiar with glycemic index, um, but insulin index is basically represents how much a particular food will elevate the concentration of insulin in the blood. Um, yes, carbohydrates do that the most, but proteins actually do as well, okay? Specifically, some proteins more than others. So obviously, if a protein has a high insulin index, you could potentially, in theory, refer to it as a better mass builder because of the insulin-like response to it, okay? Um, and so basically, the insulin index is it's, it elevates the concentration of insulin in the blood during a two-hour period after, in, for, after inge being ingested, okay? So to give you a reference, all right, um, oil or butter has like a rating of one to two, three percent, okay? Very low, not one, two to three percent. Jelly beans have 160 percent, okay, rating on insulin index. Kind of gives you a range before I start talking about all of them, all right? First thing we're going to talk about is chicken, all right? Chicken's probably the most universal used protein source and probably all of bodybuilding, powerlifting, and strongman, all right? It's lean. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, insulin index of a 24, so it's fairly on the lower side. Um, this is the chicken that I use, uh, Bell Evans Air Chill Chicken. Um, I'm not a huge advocate of organic chicken because it doesn't really change a whole lot of the, uh, the breakdown of the meat considering it's low in fat. So it's not like you're going to get a higher distribution of omega-3s in chicken. Um, I'm into air chilled, so it doesn't really soak in that bath. Um, it's much tender, has 0% retained water, and it digests much better. Okay, Obviously, you don't have to use that. I'm just telling you what I use. Um, Chicken can be used for both bulking and cutting. Um, it's kind of universal. It can be used any way of those. Uh, it's a great source of niacin, phosphorus, B vitamins, and of course, heme iron, which is a more absorbable form of iron compared to iron found in vegetables. One thing though, uh, people have found that people have trouble digesting chicken sometimes. And usually that comes down to uh, people with leaky gut syndrome or have an increase in intestinal permeability, which is basically uh, It's the material that can pass through the gastrointestinal tract from the cells lining into the gut wall into the rest of the body So it can be in some sense the word upsetting to the stomach or inflammatory, but that's mainly more seen with regular conventional chicken that's all puffed up uh, full of crap and retained water and soak in the chlorine bath now that's personally what I found, all right? Some of the things I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say is backed by research, and some of them I'm gonna say it's anecdotal, all right? That is anecdotal. A lot of people that I have, the clients that I help who have digestive issues, will switch to air chilled, and they don't have any problems digesting chicken, okay? Um, so that's something that you can take with a grain of salt. That's not necessarily fact, okay? I have to say that because interpretation of what information is being provided can easily be bent and skewed, okay? But chicken's a staple in mine and most people's diets and it's a good source of protein. Can't really criticize it. Um, it's definitely probably overall the best neutral source of protein, I would call it, if I was gonna put a term to it. Now beef, beef, bison, sirloin. Insulin index of beef, bison, is around 50%. So in theory, you could refer to this as a much better mass builder, okay? Um, it's much more nutrient dense than chicken and most all meats. 
uh, nutrient dense, meaning it has a lot more other micronutrients in it, such as niacin, phosphorus, B vitamins, B12, uh, heme iron, um, and of course, saturated fat and cholesterol. So a lot of, some people have theorized that foods that are a little high in cholesterol and fat obviously have a hormonal effect in the body, especially with natural bodybuilders, all right? So if you cut the diet really low in saturated fat and cholesterol and you're a natural bodybuilder, your testosterone is gonna plummet. You're gonna perform horribly. Um, so red meat is definitely a better mass builder, better performance enhancer, okay? That's probably in theory. There's no studies to sit there and provide that with all people eating one or the other. But it's something that's kind of generally known anecdotally through strength sports, powerlifting, and strongman, etc. Um, <clears throat> game meats like bison and stuff like that are definitely, in my opinion, a little higher quality. They, di di they digest better. Um, a lot of the cheaper, crappy red meats, who knows what happens in their whole processing and breakdown, sometimes don't digest well. Some people find that ground beef digests better than sirloin. <clears throat> now it brings us to the next question is grass-fed versus non-grass-fed. Nutrient-wise, it doesn't really change all that much. Is it better and more humane? Of course, but that's a whole nother area we're not gonna get into. Um, the other aspect is uh, people will talk about cancer causing issues with red meat and <clears throat> Observational studies provide a correlation. They do not provide evidence of causation, okay? So if you look at the general population, which are not strength athletes and who are not healthy individuals in general, the people eating the most red meat are who? Also the people who are not exercising, who are overweight, who are eating grilled meats, who are going to steakhouses, eating 20 ounce porterhouses, eating charred meats, bratwurst, drinking beer, possibly smoking cigarettes, not eating fruits and vegetables, probably having a lower fiber intake. So of course in that population, you're gonna see a higher incidence of colon cancer. So does red meat by itself cause cancer? No, you can't provide evidence of that because there isn't any. Now on the spectrum of how you cook it, there is evidence of that. Red meat, because of the fat content and the under high heat causes uh, heterocyclical means it burns chars the meat and those are known carcinogens to the human body specifically you know intestinal tract and of course if you follow a low fiber diet and you have more contact with meats on a daily basis that are charred you're gonna have more contact of those carcinogens to the intestinal tract thus increasing risk of cancer so obviously having a higher fiber diet or a balanced diet watching how you cook these meats, maybe cooking them in a pan to a low medium heat, don't grill them, uh, can greatly reduce your risk of colon cancer. So red meat itself doesn't cause cancer. Populations studied who eat a large amounts of red meat have a higher incidence of cancer. Doesn't mean this causes cancer, especially when you look at the population who is not into the strength realm of eating balanced diets and more red meat, they're not taking care of themselves either, okay? So understand that, guys. Understand the risk and what's involved. Um, <clears throat> it's, you know, uh, red meat, I think I've reviewed this already, I'll say it again, high in B12, high in iron, zinc. Um, it's it's really a powerhouse. And a lot, I tell people, and just like Stan Efferding would stay, you know, when you're trying to be the best that you can be in a sport, you know, you're not trying to be exactly healthy you're trying to be the best you can be. So red meat, eating red meat multiple times a day is a common practice amongst a lot of athletes in strength sports and stuff like that. Um, now, the saturated fat and cholesterol, people are like, well, red meat's gonna increase my cholesterol, all right? Serum cholesterol is not impacted as much by dietary cholesterol as I thought. A small percent of the population is. High saturated fat diet with high sugar and carbohydrates provides the recipe for increased LDL serum cholesterol. So that's something to keep in mind so you understand it. So you're not taking bits and pieces of what the news says because they always mess up everything because they're trying to sell headlines. And it also has a very high satiety rating, meaning the ability to keep you full for longer. And that's obviously due to the fat content. Sorry guys, I have a cold, you gotta deal with it. Moving on. Cod. Cod has a very 
low insulin index. Cod's probably the best at burning fat because it's small impact on raising insulin. So insulin becomes very low in the body in low carbohydrate diet with eating cod. It's extremely low in fat. Um, it's very easily digestible, has a very low satiety rating. So you're gonna get hungry really quick, probably because of low fat content. And it's easily, to, the, the collagen that holds the proteins together break down really quickly. Um, it's a great source of B vitamins, phosphorus, selenium. It's cod's low in mercury compared to other fish. So it's a very good source uh, if you're gonna be eating fish on a regular basis. I always prefer the cod loins, not the filet. Much less fishy than the filet in my opinion. Um, downfall to cod is it might contain worms. Yes, worms, parasites. So it's important that you cook to internal temperature to 145 at least. Or usually what's described as a, it's white and it flakes apart and it's all the way through. You don't see any sort of off opaque color inside. <clears throat> oh yeah, red meat might contain E. coli in the processing plant. E. coli dies at 155. If you want to be really safe, cook it to 160, internal temperature. You won't have a problem. With all these recalls that occur, if people were checking the internal temperature of their meat, they would have never gotten sick. Chicken, 165. Moving on. All right, Atlantic salmon. We're not gonna touch too much on wild salmon versus farm-raised salmon, okay? There's a lot of theories on that. And the new regulations in Norway, farm-raised salmon is pretty stringent. So the amount of PCBs and things that contaminants it contain is very low. Some say that even wild salmon has higher amount of mercury and PCBs than farm-raised. It all depends where it is farm-raised. The new regulations are pretty strict. Farm-raised does contain a little more higher fat content than wild. It also has a little bit less omega-3s than wild, but it still does taste like American, uh, have omega-3s. I also find that farm-raised tastes better, obviously, because of the higher fat content. <clears throat> Insulin index of salmon is 29, so it's pretty good. Um, it can be used for cutting or not. Um, it's high in potassium, B vitamins, selenium, and a particular antioxidant, which I'm gonna total butcher when I talk about this, is Astanxin. It's an orange pigment, kind of like closer to carotene. It's an antioxidant. It's very good for you. Um, and uh, I love salmon. Salmon can be eaten on a daily basis, in my opinion. It's good stuff, but usually people would recommend two or three times per week um, to kind of change it up. Personally, I alternate every other day with bison and salmon for my last meal. I like to have a variety of food in the diet. And I know a lot of you are like, who do have time for that? But you know what, guys? Convenience comes with the cost. If you want to be optimal with your nutrient intake, uh, you got to cycle your food, have more of a variety. It doesn't have to be something where you like alternate every other day like me, but change it up sometimes. All right? <clears throat> whole eggs. Probably one of the best things ever. Whole eggs. I use pasture-raised eggs, which I'll get into in a second, versus conventional. Conventional eggs are just complete garbage in my opinion. <clears throat> um, insulin index of 21. Whole eggs are like a powerhouse of micronutrients, all right? Um, very micronutrient dense. High in selenium, vitamin D, B6, B12, minerals such as zinc, iron, copper, contains lutein, um, and zeanthan, great for eye health, great source of choline. Yes, it's very high in cholesterol. Um, but like I said before, dietary cholesterol does not impact serum cholesterol like they once thought. Um, again, high saturated fat intake along with high carbohydrate intake and obviously in a caloric surplus is what creates that environment for LDL increase. Obviously there's a genetic component, so there's gonna be people who fall between the cracks. <clears throat> Whole eggs are awesome, all right? So don't try to ditch the whole egg all the time. Always have one or two whole eggs, not just all straight egg whites, which we're gonna get into. Egg whites, honestly, are probably, in my opinion, probably one of the crappiest protein. Not crappiest, because all of these are high quality proteins, but egg whites are basically nutrientless. They're fat free, cholesterol free, um, they have a higher insulin index of 55. They don't keep you very full very long. They will 
and immediately because of the sulfur containing in them. Um, sulfur can cause digestive issues and gas, um, specifically in egg whites because you're eating them in such large quantities. Um, and that can be an issue for some. Um, and also can interfere with biotin absorption in large amounts. So it can alter absorption of some nutrients. Um, and then other people talk about uh, pasture-raised egg whites in a carton and drinking them versus cooking them. Yes, you can drink them and still absorb them. But cooking them, you do absorb them better, all right? Not to mention drinking them, you do have a much higher risk of foodborne illness. So if you are going to drink them and you crack this carton, you best better finish this within 24, 48 hours. Don't let it sit for five days in the fridge and you're drinking it. Not a good idea. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, egg whites can still be in a diet. And it's not like the worst thing in the world. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's, it's not really the best bang for your buck. Not by any means. Um, but I still eat egg whites every day. I just make sure I have other nutrient dense foods with them. I will add spinach and mushrooms to them. I will have my whole eggs. Um, and that way I can get a little extra protein from the egg white itself. Um, but you definitely don't want to be eating egg whites every meal all day. That's not a way, to, good way to grow big, big muscles and recover and all that. Plus, you get the alter absorption of biotin, which you just definitely do not want. Okay? So, guys, I, I hope you like this kind of little tidbit on proteins. I wanted to kind of go in depth a little bit about common proteins used in bodybuilding, powerlifter, and strongman, and how you can use them and whatnot. And I'm just going to kind of give you a touch on some little tips and things that people see. So red meat, people in prep or very depleted know this, is, you know, say if you're eating chicken and cod and you're low carb and you plead really hard and then you have a big steak. And you notice in the next two, three, four hours or the next morning, your veins are pumping, they look full and muscles look round and full. Yes, that does happen. Why exactly? I can't tell you because I'm not going to make up crap that's not necessarily 100%, but I will tell you that there's a strong correlation um, when you eat red meat after the deprived state, how much more fuller your muscles look and feel and how much stronger you feel. <clears throat> could be the cholesterol, could be the saturated fat, could be the protein breakdown in it, who knows, but it does seem to happen. Um, <clears throat> all right, guys, so... Uh, in my opinion, when you're in the off season, um, you know, you can throw in cod every once in a while and change it up. But if you're really trying to grow muscle, put on muscle mass and weight, I don't think cod's the best way to go. I would go for more salmon, whole eggs, meat, uh, red meat, um, maybe once a day or three times a week max and alternate it back and forth to salmon, red meat. And obviously chicken be your main staple. Um, but that's what I would do. And obviously get your cholesterol checked. Make sure that's okay because some people will see an increased serum cholesterol level with intake of red meat and whole eggs. It's a very small percent of people that that occurs, but it does happen. Um, but again, most of the time it's related to carbohydrate intake in combination of saturated fat intake. Um, other thing to note too is when you're going to get your blood labs, this is good for you guys to get blood labs who have high creatinine levels, don't have red meat 24 to 40 hours before you get blood labs. Some research have shown, and I've seen this myself, red meat the night before can give you a false high creatinine level in the morning. <clears throat> when I did that, I was eating red meat twice a day. My creatinine level was slightly elevated, which the first time was elevated in probably 10 years. So I did a little research and figured out this possibly could be the culprit. So I cut it out for 72 hours and redid it. And my creatinine dropped significantly. And then I read more about why. So you guys can Google it and read about why, but sometimes it can give you false high creatinine level reading in the morning. Um, but a little good tidbit to know and educate yourself. All right, guys, if you guys have any more questions, you can comment below. And when I have time, I'll do the best I can to answer everybody in full. Um, and the next video I'm going to make, and we're gonna discuss the issues with gluten and bodybuilding and powerlifting and digestive issues and wheat protein because as many of you guys don't know gluten may not be the problem but the type of wheat protein you're ingesting is so stay tuned for that video that will be out when it's out but guys if you have any more questions on topics you think you might want to know more about 
you can also comment below. Thanks guys.